Hey, this is Aron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. A while back, and by that I mean a while back, in a podcast long ago, I covered the concept of straight versus pre-multiplied renders. While it's not the most exciting tutorial that I've ever done, when it comes to compositing elements created outside your After Effects project or rendering with an alpha channel for compositing in other software, it's probably one of the most important concepts I ever covered. If you haven't watched that, go do it. In that podcast, I talked about how to properly interpret footage to get rid of any artifacts such as the dark halo around the partially transparent edges, such as you might see from a motion blur. But sometimes, interpreting footage properly is just not enough, particularly when the original video was rendered pre-multiplied, or matted with color, along with an embedded alpha channel. Meaning, the RGB channel has some of the background color mixed into it, and the alpha channel is being used to remove the background all in one convenient and problem-causing package. As I've said before, in most cases, you'll want to render straight. But as a compositor, you may not always be given straight renders, possibly because the person rendering it didn't know any better, but possibly for other reasons. And there are a few reasons to render pre-multiplied instead of straight. For example, this doesn't happen often, but I've seen a few 3D programs create horrible edges on the alpha channel when rendered straight, particularly with motion blur. So sometimes pre-multiplied may be your only option for getting something halfway decent. But as you know from that older podcast, a pre-multiplied RGB channel, when mixed with an alpha channel, can create a dark halo around the partially transparent edges. So while it may be better than rendering straight, it still isn't perfect. And when you go to composite, it just won't look right. In this example, I have some text that was rendered pre-multiplied over a black background. And as you can see, while the text is in motion, there's a dark halo around the edges, particularly around the motion blur. And if you can't see it, well, I'll show you the difference between good and bad right now, and then I promise you will see it. So select the video and choose Effect, Channel, Remove Color Matting. Unless the image was not rendered over a black background, you'll immediately see a result. The black halo is gone. If the image was rendered over a different colored background, and I don't know why you do that, but if that's what you did, then you can go into the effects panel and change the background color property, which is set to black by default. Just make sure that you use the exact color of the background for the cleanest results. But okay, that's all well and good for a video that has an alpha channel embedded along with the RGB channels. But what if you're given a pre-multiplied RGB render? meaning a video of the object, the 3D object I'm talking about, rendered over a black background with no alpha channel. And as a separate video file, you're given an alpha render, meaning a black and white video that will be used as a luma mat to remove the black background. Now if I tell the RGB video to use the alpha render as a luma mat, as you can see, it cuts out the black background. But there is still a black halo. And unlike before, if I were to select the RGB video and choose Effect, Channel, Remove Color Matting, this does nothing. Since the image has no alpha channel, remember it's borrowing the alpha channel from the layer above, the effect doesn't understand what we want to remove from the video. Let me just undo that. Okay. So that won't work, but all is not lost. Let's solve this bump in the road using pre-composing another crucial aspect of compositing that I've covered in a previous podcast. Again, if you aren't familiar with nesting and pre-composing, go watch that two-part tutorial. It'll save about eight minutes of repeating myself here. Select both the RGB and the alpha render and choose Layer Pre-Compose. In this case, I don't need to open the new composition, so I'll make sure that that option is unchecked, and then I'll click OK. Now the two layers have become one, and as far as After Effects is concerned, this is now a video with an embedded alpha channel, which means that if we choose Effect, Channel, Remove Color Matting, we get the right result. By the way, this process is often referred to as unmultiplying, just so you know. So if you're ever at a dinner party and someone brings up unmultiplying, you won't have to just smile and nod. You can be a valuable contributor to the conversation. I would, however, suggest finding a better party, but I can only help you so much. All right, that's it. Hopefully this will help you in your compositing work. If it does and you want to show some love, check out my DVDs at training.creativecow.net. I have a new one out called After Effects, The Next Level Volume 2 CS3 Tips and Techniques, which has a ton of great stuff for those using After Effects CS3 and beyond. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.